Today we're going to focus on some new translations, overlooked details, and some newly discovered info about Gen 2's final build. Originally, Pokémon Gold and Silver were very different games that essentially followed the vision of Satoshi Tajiri, the series creator and director of Gen 1. To understand how drastic the change was, here's an excerpt from a Japanese magazine we had translated where the programmer Tetsuya Watanabe says, That version's a completely different game from what made it to store shelves. Everything got remade after that. The first world map was very grand in scale, and based on the entirety of Japan. However, this meant we couldn't spare much cartridge space for each individual town, nor put much distance between them, so it all felt much more compact than the Kanto games. Development was a bit of a struggle, and things weren't going too well. Game Freak also felt tremendous pressure to up their game after Gen 1 unexpectedly became the best-selling games of all time. They didn't want to disappoint their millions and millions of fans, so Tajiri stepped aside and let Junichi Masuda take his place and recreate Gold and Silver according to his own vision. The original Tajiri build of Gold and Silver is best known for appearing in the leaked Space World 1997 demos. It had a unique Johto Dex that ended up getting almost entirely scrapped and all of Japan squeezed inside. In another Japanese magazine, Masuda explains his complete transformation of Gen 2, saying, I took over direction of gold and silver from Tajiri, then went to Kyoto to create my vision for the Johto region. I remember staying at a hotel, visiting temples to gather information, then going back to the hotel and calling everyone, and we'd work out what to put on the map. For example, when I went to the pagoda at Toji Temple, the East Temple, I heard that a long time ago there used to be a West Temple as well. I thought, ah, I want to use that, so I added the burned tower. Once I got back home to Tokyo, I had a good idea of what Johto would look like. In the Tajiri version, places had names like Mount Fuji, Silent Hill, and Old City. Some were probably placeholders, but regardless. In Masuda's version, they went back to naming places after colors, like what they did in Gen 1. Goldenrod, Ecruteak City, and Mahogany Town, for example. In one of these magazines, they say they intentionally chose unusual and old-fashioned words for colors, so when fans got older, eventually they'd come across those colors as adults and think, huh, that's the name of that Pokémon town. Like Cyanwood City. Most kids don't know Cyan's basically sky blue. Interestingly though, the colors that represent towns aren't the same between Japanese and English. For example, in Japan, Cyanwood City is called Tanba City, which is more of an ocean green, which makes more sense for a seaside city. Azalea Town's Japanese name is Hiwata Town, a dark brown color, which unlike in English matches the town's roofs. New Bark Town's called Wakaba Town, which is light green, again, the same color as the roofs. And even y'all adults probably still don't know what Ekruteak City is. is a light brown, but in Japan it's Enju City, which is actually red. As for Johto itself, we actually need to clear up some misinformation. In 64 Dream Magazine, the interviewer asks what Johto means, and Masuda says, Jo can mean castle, so it's like the capital of castles. You may have read on places like Bulbapedia that Johto means castle palace or lattice-shaped palace. It ain't Bulbapedia's fault, though. That info originally comes from the official English translation of Junichi Masuda's blog. Masuda had Hiro Nakamura translated for an English audience. Hiro's the guy who came up with most early Pokémon's English names. I'm sure he's a great translator, but he really didn't put much effort into Masuda's blog. Which is apparent even for someone who can't speak Japanese. I mean, just look at this. Point is, the official translation is bogus. Johto doesn't mean lattice-shaped palace. That doesn't even make sense. The truth is, according to Masuda in his mother tongue, Johto actually means the capital of castles. That does make sense because Johto is based on Masuda's walks through Kyoto, home to many of Japan's most famous castles. Gold and Silver were originally supposed to launch in 1997, but the complete transformation after Masuda took over meant it got delayed all the way to 99. There was also the matter of debugging, which took six months all on its own. When they started debugging, they didn't even know what Pokémon were going to make it into the final game. According to Watanabe in one of those magazines, about 200 ended up in the trash. We already covered all the Space World 97 demo Pokémon in older videos, so today we're going to highlight a few who got cut even later in development. We commissioned some Sugimori-style watercolor from Racy Beep as per usual, who did all that Space World art a few years back. But before we get to all that, a word from this episode's sponsor, Factor. Factor delivers fresh, never-frozen meals straight to your doorstep. In just two minutes, Factor meals are ready to eat and enjoy, so you can say goodbye to all the grocery store trips, prepping, and cleanup. 
Factors expert chefs have crafted a weekly rotation of 34 flavor-packed options for you to choose from, like the Steakhouse Filet and Autumn Medley, Shredded Chicken Taco Bowl, and Garlic Rosemary Pork Chop. And there's plenty of calorie-conscious, dietitian approved choices with around or less than 550 calories per serving. Personally for us, this has definitely helped keep the pounds off while working from home and stopped us from reaching for our phones to order fast food late at night. So Factor empowers you to stick to routines, pursue wellness goals, and maintain a clean eating regimen. And you can rest easy knowing that Factor offset 100% of their delivery emissions, used 100% renewable electricity for their production sites and offices, and even feature sustainably sourced seafood in all their meals. Experience the freedom of more time for hobbies like gaming, flexibility in your order size, and the option to skip a week if you're traveling. If you like what you've heard so far, head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code DIDYOUKNOWGAMING50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. This offer won't last, so again, that's code DIDYOUKNOWGAMING50 to get 50% off your first Factor box at Factor75.com. And now, back to the cut Pokémon. The 2020 leak didn't include these Pokémon names, but according to Game Freak, a lot of them never had names to begin with. So let's start with this scrapped Tanuki Pokémon. Western Nintendo fans mostly know Tanukis from Tom Nook in Animal Crossing, or Mario's Tanuki suit, but it's actually a real-life animal native to Japan, nicknamed Raccoon Dogs. This Pokémon's a reference to one Tanuki in particular, the villain of a Japanese folktale called Kachi Kachi Yama. It's pretty weird, but to sum it up, a farmer finds a Tanuki in his fields, so he traps it to cook for dinner later. When the farmer leaves for town, the tanuki begs the farmer's wife to set him free. She takes pity, but once it's free, it kills her, chops her up, and later tricks her husband into eating her flesh in a soup. Anyway, the farmer's got a rabbit friend who swears vengeance, and later when the tanuki's carrying some firewood on his back, the rabbit sets it ablaze. That's usually the cover on storybook versions of the folktale, and that's what this Pokémon was, the deranged, tortured tanuki from Kachi Kachi Yama. There was also this cute ghost flanked by a couple Hitodama. In Japanese culture, Hitodama are balls of fire that are dead people's souls separated from their bodies. That's why the ghost's purple fires have little faces. Hitodama literally translates into English as souls of the dead. Conversely, this stork Pokémon with a baby in its beak was based on Western folklore. Exact origins of the myth are disputed, but likely began in medieval Europe, where human couples often married in summer. Also in summer, storks flew away on nine-month migrations, then returned with baby chicks at the same time humans were having their honeymoon babies. Storks also stay faithful to one mate for their entire lives, and they're friendly towards humans, so they make for good role models in traditional societies. More importantly though, most parents don't want to tell their kids where babies really come from. And that's how folklore that storks delivered babies was born, with this Pokémon being a Poké adaptation of that medieval myth. This next one was a middle stage between Natu and Zatu. The sprite leak was black and white, but Natu and Zatu were brown in Tajiri's Gen 2, so their middle evolution was probably brown as well. After Masuda took over, the birds were changed to green, so if it hadn't got cut, the mid-stage presumably would have ended up green too. We'll do a few more rapid-fire, like this flying squirrel with a sheathed sword and a ninja motif, but the flying squirrel that ultimately made it into Gen 2 was Sentret instead. There was also this foxtail Pokémon who may have wound up getting turned into Furret. This little dinosaur got cut, but a similar design made it into Gen 4 as Cranidos. Likewise, this Cyclops Scorpion looks a lot like Gen 4's Skorupi, and this Koala Pokémon appears it was sorta of recycled to make Kamala from Gen 7. There was also a boar with antlers, a long-tongued frog, this rabbity Pikachu-y thing, and maybe the strangest of them all, this monstrous skeleton Pokémon. We're gonna debunk a couple big Gen 2 rumors here in a minute, but since we're already in rapid-fire mode, first we want to toss out some random trivia we found in these magazines, like that gold and silver were simplified for art director Ken Sugimori's dad. Sugimori let his pops play some Gen 1, but he couldn't even figure out how to leave the first house. So Sugimori had them simplify Gen 2 for folks like his old man, like making the UI dummy-proof and having the select button bring out your bike. See haters, Pokémon's not a kid's game. It's for really, really old people too. Sugimori also made a Pokémon based on his childhood pet bird, who surprised him one time by standing on one foot. If you haven't figured it out yet, it was Hoot Hoot. Sugimori said it was his favorite Johto Pokémon. 
He also wanted to simplify all the Pokémon sprites from four colors down to two, but the other devs called it an impossible request. Here's what Pikachu and Lugia might have looked like in that style, compared to how they ended up looking in the release version. Seemingly, Sugimori wanted them that way not to save space, but for minimalistic design sensibilities. They don't look great, but maybe they would have looked better on a tiny Game Boy with no backlight, in Sugimori's opinion. The devs also say adding Kanto was an impulsive decision early in development. Someone just said it'd be cool, so they went and did it. It was already in that early Tajiri version, but all squeezed into the size of a single city. One of these magazines also shows Koji Nishino's business card. Snorlax is based on Nishino, so he proudly displays the Pokémon on his card. Actually, all the devs have Pokémon on their cards. They've changed over the years, but at one point Tajiri had Ho-Oh, Sugimori had Venusaur, and Masuda had Psyduck, though he later changed it to Pikachu and Pichu. Okay, now we're gonna debunk a couple long-running popular rumors about Gen 2, starting with the oft-repeated claim that Gold and Silver were originally planned to be the last Pokémon games ever made. Here's a 2010 Destructoid article titled, Pokémon Gold and Silver were meant to be the series finale. In 2019, The Gamer said, Gold and Silver were once planned to be the final games in the series. The same thing from Screen Rant in 2022. Not just gaming outlets, a lot of fans believe it too. Here's a Reddit thread called, Today I learned Gold and Silver were supposed to be the final games in the series, effectively ending the Pokémon franchise for good. Almost 2,000 upvotes. GameFAQ threads, NeoSeeker, it's all over the internet. We could go on, but you get the point. It's been a persistent rumor for over a decade. But it just ain't true. In a July 2000 issue of Nintendo Online Magazine we translated, originally published before Gold and Silver even released outside Japan, series creator Satoshi Tajiri and now president of the Pokémon Company explained Gen 2's development. The interview asks if Gold and Silver is the end of the story. Tajiri says flat out, no, it's not the end. So, how'd the rumor even start? As the basis for their claims, those aforementioned news articles cite a 2010 interview, where Ishihara said, I worked with the assumption that after we put out gold and silver, my work as far as Pokémon was concerned would be done. I didn't intend to make any more Pokémon titles. But he's just saying he was done, not the franchise. Throughout that same interview, Ishihara goes on to say, For me, Pokémon Gold and Pokémon Silver represent the finish line. I didn't intend to make any more Pokémon titles. It would be time for me to do something else. Every Pokémon game up to that point was made by 10 or 20 developers and sold in the tens of millions. They were ridiculously profitable. A lot of development was literally done out of a house. They didn't even have to pay for office space. Game Freak would have been swimming in cash even if they were only selling 1 million. Ishihara wasn't a developer. He did do some consultation on the games, but first and foremost, he was the guy who sold merchandise and licensing deals. He was worried Pokémon Fever was cooling off, so if sales really did drop significantly, there wouldn't have been boatloads of merch and licensing anymore. So he was considering moving on and taking his business skills elsewhere, but ultimately decided, quote, I couldn't very well get off the ride halfway through. Pokémon was a monster IP in every sense of the word, and gold and silver were never going to be the end of it. Of all the parallel universes out there, not even one of them would have seen Game Freak go back to making games like Quinty and Pulseman. The other rumor we want to debunk, and we say this with nothing but love for Satoru Iwata, was that he wrote a compression algorithm that increased the storage space in gold and silver. Some versions of the rumor even say Kanto couldn't have been squeezed in without him. Tech Radar, Kotaku, and lots of websites published articles saying Iwata crammed a whole country into Gen 2. Heck, even we said it in an old video. Whoops. But most folks could be forgiven for thinking the rumor was true, because an old Game Freak interview and even some in-game dialogue in Ultra Sun and Moon seemed to confirm it, where Morimoto's in-game character says, When we were told halfway through development to make Kanto 2, I thought I might just expire on the spot. When we were having trouble fitting all the data in for gold and silver, and we were really in a pinch, this amazing guy came along and made a program for us that solved all our problems. He went on to become the amazing president of a real big company soon after that too. To get to the truth, you can't just look at interviews on the record. You've actually got to dig through Gen 2's data. Doing so reveals that Iwata did write an algorithm for gold and silver, but it actually decreased the amount of storage space by a few percentage points. In other words, Kanto made it into Gen 2 in spite of his algorithm. 
They could have added even more real estate if they stuck with Gen 1's algorithm. So, why didn't they? Well, Iwata's algorithm wasn't built for size, it was built for speed. Right now, on the left, you're seeing the compression algorithm from the 97 Tajiri version of Gold, which used the same compression algorithm Gen 1 used. On the right, you're seeing Masuda's final release version, using Iwata's algorithm. Iwata's compression saves a fraction of a second at the start of a battle, another fraction when the Pokémon come out, and lots of other places. Basically, it all comes down to faster load times. We don't want to bog you down in too much technical jargon, but his Gen 2 algorithm was a tweaked version of the 1989 algorithm used in Earthbound and other HAL Labs games. The company Iwata was programmer, then president of, before he became president of Nintendo. In the code, Iwata himself calls it a high-speed algorithm. The real reason Game Freak was able to squeeze in Kanto was because they upgraded to 1 megabyte Game Boy cartridges for Gen 2, while the earlier games only had half a megabyte. In other words, they doubled the cartridge size. A big thanks to Lord Danimal and Team Space World founder San Kui for showing us this code. We wouldn't have even thought to go digging without him. They showed us about five years ago, but it felt inappropriate to share so soon after Iwata's tragic passing. Now enough time's gone by, we hope it doesn't feel disrespectful. He may not have given us a whole extra region in Gen 2, but he did save us from annoyingly long load times, so for that Iwata-san, we thank you. At the end of one of those Japanese magazine interviews, they asked Game Freak that now Gold and Silver's finished, if they felt like they'd completed the games they wanted to make. They all said in unison, not even close. Masuda continued, saying, To us, they don't feel fully complete. They'd pushed the Game Boy Color to its limits, but there's still so much more they wanted to do. In another translated interview, Tajiri said, I'm thinking the best Pokémon game will be released sooner rather than later, but whether or not it'll be the best Pokémon game is something I can't achieve on my own. From here on out, kids who grew up playing may grow up to be game developers, right? And if those kids had the same vision as us, then I definitely think it's possible to expand the world of Pokémon by working together with them. Tajiri's prediction came true. The day Gold and Silver released in Japan, a young man was in line at the store at 7 a.m. waiting to buy them. Ten years later, he was the art director on the remakes Heart Gold and Soul Silver. His name? Takao Uno. If you want to learn lots more about those remakes, make sure and subscribe. We're going to have a dedicated Heart Gold Soul Silver video coming up soon. Until then, did you also know your house in Gen 1 is playing Dragon Ball on TV, but only in the French version? For more changes made to Gen 1 in every localization, click the video on screen. Or if you'd rather watch a full hour of Pokemon trivia, click the other video. Special thanks to our translator, proofreaders, artist, and most of all, thank you for watching. See you next time.